by SUPK. Why do you want Sadiq Khan to care about your problems? He's not meant to care. The knife crime is something that's happened among black people. He's not showing up because he don't care. And the problem is, where are the black leaders, man? Where are they? Where is their care, man? I don't want an Arab to care about my problems. I want black people to care about my problems, man. So read that for me, Roman 12 and 10. Romans 12 verse 10, be kindly affectionate to one another. And the Bible says, be kindly affectionate one towards another. What's that talking about? Meaning black people should care about the problems of other black people, man. Be kindly affectionate one towards another. Black people complain about Sadiq Khan. He didn't come to the knife crime event. Why should he care? He's an Arab. Why, why would he care about black people? Why is he gonna come to that event when we're not of the same race of him, man? But guess what? At that same event, black people, we were meant to be there, man. We should have been supporting, talking about the issues of um, the knife crime, not Sadiq Khan. Read that again. Romans, Romans 12, verse 10. Be kindly affectionate to one another. And the Bible says, be kindly affectionate one to another. And that's how we're meant to be. But what's the problem? Because of how we live in, black people, what's happened? We become selfish, man. From as long as it's not your son that's dead, well, it ain't bothering me. Knife crime ain't affecting me. My son came home last night, so you mean him, everything's fine. And that's not how it's meant to be, man. You're meant to be kindly affectionate one towards another. If a black man dies on the street, that's your son, man. If a black girl dies on the street, that's your daughter, man. Not well, my son's fine. He's in college, but his son died, not my problem. You know what I mean? You're meant to be kindly affectionate one towards another. We're one family, man. We came to the West Indies as one family, picking cotton, picking cane. We're one family. If one of us die, all of us die, black man. If one black girl dies, all of our daughters have died, man. And that's the problem. We're not kindly affectionate one to another. We just don't care. Well, from as long as it's not me, then what does well, if it's not me, then who cares? It's not meant to be that way. We done. With brotherly love. Um, with what? Brotherly love. And with love, man. We forgot that, man. In the UK, we forgot that love. I remember back in the 60s, I've heard about it, how black people loved each other, man. You know what I mean? We would rent, we would rent out one room and share that room, man. We had love. And what's happened now? Everyone's gotten selfish. Everyone well, it's all about me. I'm gonna care about only my family. And we wasn't like that. When the Jamaicans came to England in the 50s and 60s, we had that love, man. Black shops, black businesses. And what happened? Because of religion, because of Christianity, you gotta love everybody, love your neighbor as yourself, and it don't even mean that. You know what I mean? We lost that love and started loving our enemies, loving the same people that whipped your ancestors' backs, man. Loving the same people that forced your ancestors to pick tobacco, to pick cotton, to pick cane, man. And that's the problem. We've forgotten that. Love, read up. In honor, preferring one another. And in honor, preferring one another. What does that mean? Black man, you're supposed to prefer a man that looks just like you, man. You're supposed to prefer a black man like you above everybody. And that's racism in the Bible. It says, 
preferring one another. So meaning, you're not meant to be caring about everyone else. Sid you know I mean? Everyone's complaining, Sadiq Khan, he didn't come to the okay. event. Why? Because it's a black event. But guess what? I don't want him to go anyway, man. But guess what, black man? I want you to go. Why? Because the Bible says to prefer one another. You're supposed to be there, not Sadiq Khan. Who cares what he thinks? It's a black problem. And guess what? Only black people are meant to care, man. We're going to fix our own issues, just like every nation. Every nation has issues, but guess what? I don't care about them. You want to know why? Because I'm not of that race. While their race are meant to fix their issues. And guess what? In the black community, life crime's an issue. And guess what, black man? You're supposed to care, not Sadiq Khan. It's not his problem, man. Read it again. Be kind to one another. To one another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. And in honor, preferring one another. Meaning, you're supposed to prefer your race over another race, man. That's the Bible. A lot of you that claim to know the Bible don't even know that the same God that you read of in this Bible, he's racist, man. He only prefers the Israelites above every nation. That's racism. If God's saying, I prefer the Jews above every nation which I've made, that's racism. And in the same Bible, it's saying prefer one another, meaning you're only supposed to prefer the people of your race, man. You're, su you're supposed to be kindly affectionate to someone of your own race, man. Every nation has issues, but guess what? You're not meant to care. You're not meant to, you mean, you're not meant to even care what happens, but you're only meant to be occupied on fixing the problems of your race, man. The Bible says, be holy unto me. What does the word holy mean? Anyone know? According to the Bible, what does the word holy mean? I know a lot of you love church, man. And in church, your pastor loves the word holy and sanctified and cleansed and washed and all that good stuff. But according to the Bible, what does holy mean? Holy means to be separate. And God told the Israelites, God told the Jews, God told you, black man, you better be separate. When you serve the Lord, you gotta be separate, man. You, know, you can't be doing Easter. You can't be eating jerk pork. You can't be eating duck and all the things that the Lord said you can't eat. You gotta be holy, AKA separate, black man. Read. For I, the Lord, I'm holy. Oh, God's holy, God's separate, man. God separated you, black man. I know you wanna live like everyone else. You know what I mean? You wanna do what they do, do Easter, Valentine's Day. But you can't do it. God says he's holy and God made you holy. And what does holy mean? It means separate. You can't do what these nations do. Read. And severed you from other people. And God severed us from other people. To sever means to cut off violently. Black man, God cut you off from other people. Meaning what? You can't celebrate their holidays. You can't be with their women. Yes, I said it. You can't be with their women, black man. And I know you love it, but God's against it, man. And you can't be with their men, neither black woman. God's against it. God severed you from other people. Yeah. No more, um, what's some handsome European guys love? Boy. She, you know what I mean? No more Tom Hanks and what's the other one? That short one, George Clooney, isn't that? You can't do it, man. God severed you from other people. You can't be with them, man. You can't join them. You can't celebrate their holidays. You can't be with their women. If you're a woman, you can't be with their men. And that's the Bible. You want to know what? Read it again. And I've severed you from other people. And I've severed you from other people. Has cut you off from other people, man. You can't join their religions. You can't fight their cause. And that amazes me. You got a black man in the army fighting the cause of someone else. When in your ghetto, in your community, you got a fight, man. You got a cause. But yet, you leave to go to Afghanistan, go to South Africa to fight the cause of someone who whips your ancestors back, man. You're out there fighting his cause. When there's a cause in the ghetto, man, every time a black man gets stabbed to death, there's a fight in the ghetto, man. And you, and you leave that to go and fight the cause for somebody else, man. You leave that to go and fight your enemy's wars, man. And there's a problem in the black community, and you leave it to go help in Afghanistan, to go and help in Iraq, to go all over the world. When there's a problem in the ghetto, and you ain't helping that problem, though.
There's black men being stabbed every day in London and you ain't helping that. But then yet, you joined the European army to fight their cause, man. And there's a problem next door, man. There's no black man in the black woman's house and you ain't fighting for that, though. But you jump on the plane, leave the continent to go and help the cause for somebody else, man. In the black community, there's a war, man. Every time a young black man gets stabbed in the chest, that's a war, man. Every time police harass a young black man, that's a war. Every time police stop and search, taking off a young black man's coat in the cold, man, that's a war. Every time you get racially, you know what I mean? Every time they look at you and go, you know what, he's black, I'm gonna search him, that's a war. And we need to fight that war, man. No more joining the white man's army, man. There's a problem in the ghetto. We need to fight that war, man. We need to fight the war on drugs, the wars on gangs, man. And then what everyone's complaining about. Sadiq Khan, the knife event, he didn't show up. And guess what? I don't want to see him there anyway, man. Black problems are going to be fixed by black people, man. And we can do it, man. In the ghetto, we fix problems all the time, man. I mean, we do all the time and we don't even know it. And this knife crime, drug crime, gang crime, it can be fixed by the hands of black men, man. You're telling me we can't fix it. In the black community, black men can't fix the issues. Yes, we can, man. But here's the problem. You ain't confident, man. You believe if you don't get no help from some European, it can't be done. And we can do it, man. We got the power. Ain't no one more courageous and more strong than a black man, man. Through slavery, a lot of people don't know this, Slavery wasn't all about a black man being soft and weak and saying, yes, master. In slavery, there was black men that fought, man. There was black men that protected their wives. There was many courageous, strong black men. And we have it in us, man. Ain't nobody more courageous than you, black man. Well, what's the problem? You've been fed with lies. I got to love everyone. I got to forgive. God loves everyone. I can't hate nobody. I got to love, man. Where's the love in my heart? And guess what? If you conquer that black man, you're gonna be strong again. You're gonna be courageous again, man. You're gonna be, you know what I mean? You're gonna have that masculinity which the church has taken out of you, man. Do you want do you wanna know why the black man today ain't so strong? Because of the Christian church, man. They got you in a church singing and dancing. Big strong black man, six foot two, singing about I'm gonna be saved by God. You know what I mean? It, well, he's got the whole world in his hands. Big strong black man talking about this little lie, the mic. Like, come on, man. You know what I mean? How does that work, man? Big strong black man, tambourine in his hand, singing. You know what I mean? How, how did that happen, man? A big strong black warrior with his hands in the air. Oh, Jesus, save me. Like, like what happened, man? It's the church. Do you want to know what's made black man weak? It's the church, man. And in slavery, they fed it to you. You got to love everyone. You can't have hate. Don't fight back. God don't want war. Meanwhile, the slave master's whipping your back. So hang on. God don't like war, but he's beating me. He's raping my wife. He's killing my kids. But yet, God don't like war. God's for peace, man. You know what I mean? See, and that's the lies that black men have been fed for over 400 years, man. And at the UPK, we don't feed you them lies, man. We feed you the truth according to the Bible, who you are, what the Lord requires of you. And in the black community, the Lord requires a black man to be strong, man. And if you're a black man in the church, you ain't strong, man. I've been to church, them men got bent wrist, popping neck, singing high notes like Mariah Carey and all that, man. You know what I mean? I, in the church, it's not a place for, it's not a place for a black man. You're too strong to be up in that church, man. By the UPK, this is where you're meant to be, man. But yeah, go on, let me read that again. And ye shall, and ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and I've severed you from other people. And the Lord severed us from other people. To sever means to be cut off. And that's the problem, black man. In the UK, you ain't gonna have no peace. You wanna know why? Because you're trying to be like these nations. When God severed you from other people, you can't date their women, you can't be with their men, you're severed from other people. Do what it means. You are cut off from other people. No Valentine's Day, no Easter, Kwanzaa. You can't do none of that because the Bible says you are severed from other people. You want to know what's wrong? 
we trying to be like everyone else and I see you all the time man. I see a black man trying he's trying to be like the Europeans, trying to be like the Arabs in the mosque. And the Bible says you're severed from other people, meaning what? You're not like them man. You know I mean? Why do you want to be like them? When in the Bible, God says you're the greatest people toward the earth man. Why do you want to be like someone who God says they're nothing? And that's in the Bible. God says we are both all people on the face of the earth. And I can read it for you. That's not my words. That's the Bible. Hold on, give me the, uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. I'm going to show you in the Bible where God says, not what I say, where God says the black man is above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, man. I'm going to show you. This is the same Bible that's in court. The same Bible that your pastor's meant to read, which you don't read. This Bible's in Waterstones, Dobby Hicks Smith's. And I'm going to show you it in the Bible, man. You think I'm making it up? Read it for yourself, man. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. I'm going to do something what your pastor never does, man. And it's called read the Bible. He's in church talking about his daughter's education, his son's in the army. But, you know what I mean? I'm going to show you out of the Bible. You got it for me. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people. So the Bible says, for thou art a holy people. Who is the thou? God's talking to the Israelites. And God said unto the Israelites, you are a holy people. Holy means separate. And God told the Jews, you are a separate people. Read. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God I choose thee to be a special people. And God said what? Choose thee to be a special people. Read. Unto the Lord above all people. And um, what? Above all people. And the Bible says the Jews are above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So on this earth there's many nations, many races. And God says the Jews, you black man, you are above all of them man. And, and it ain't hard to see who dresses the best, runs the fastest, you black man. Why? Because the Bible says you are above all people that are upon the face of the earth. It ain't rocket science. You're meant to leave this earth. But what happened, you started sinning. You left the way of the Lord to be like everyone else. And God called you to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth, man. Read that again. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord has choose thee to be, choose thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And God told the Jews, you black man, you are above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And if you serve the Lord again, you become righteous again. That's what you're gonna be. You're gonna be above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The God of this book ain't no liar. He promised us, but what happened, we, disobeyed, we started to serve other gods, started going to the church, started joining the mosque, started joining Seven Day Adventists, Jehovah Witness, Egyptology, Pan-Africanism, and we lost our way. Why do you think in the Bible, Christ called us the last sheep of the house of Israel? Because we're lost, man. The same way we was lost back then, we're lost now, calling ourselves Jamaicans, West Indians, Trinidadians, Montserratian, Grenadians, and we're doing that now. We're lost, man. We don't call ourselves Israelites. We don't call ourselves Jews. Why? Because we're lost. We're lost in the church. We're lost in the mosque. We're lost in everything. And we don't know who we really are, man. At the UPK, we got the records. We got the history. We got the archaeology. I got books on ancient Israel. And in ancient Israel archaeology, the Jews are black with Afros. I got ancient paintings, ancient carvings. We, we got it all, man. And guess what? Those same Jews were black, man. <laughs> Trying to find something to follow Hand loyalty, every man tried to borrow Felt pain and a lot of sorrow Got betrayed so packed I didn't even have my heart broke Living confused, about to lose hope Cops got me on the side of the road Like a sideshow, need an antidote before I croak Now I'm setting fire to rhythm and blues Call this guitar smoke 
rebel with no cause, trying to find direction. The world got me vexed. Picked up a bad lick, a habit that's hereditary from oppression. Felt like my life was on fire, trying to find an exit. Now look, 10 G's plus a good wreck. Sometimes a follower is a soldier, trying to find a good ship. Plus, when you in hell, how do you excel? Wisdom, the breath of life, I don't believe in fairy tale. Listen well to what I tell. No calling can cause pain. Something that a rebel knows very well. Can't you tell I was sent from the Lord? Got a tongue like a two-edged sword. 